are determined to focus our approach on three key drivers which we believe will reshape uh, the public sector. And the first of these is transparency. We are committed to shining a spotlight into what the public sector uh, does. We are making quite deliberately and consciously a rod for our own backs in government. We want opposition parties, we want nosy journalists, we want the Taxpayers Alliance to know exactly what is going on in all the corners of local government, of the NHS, of central government, so that we can work collaboratively using uh, modern technology, using uh, internet-based technologies to drive out and focus on waste, inefficiency, and sub-best practice wherever uh, it exists. We are committed to publishing all public-private contracts online. Uh, we're committed to uh, listing uh, publicly all items of expenditure uh, over a minimum uh, threshold, all salaries over £150,000, uh, to producing readable departmental accounts so that people can actually understand them rather than drowning in them or being crushed by them. Uh, we believe that transparency will be the most powerful disincentive to sloppy or wasteful behaviour uh, and will allow uh, practitioners to focus readily and easily on best practice. I, I, this is now a, an overused example, which many of you will know, but my neighbour, neighbouring authority, Windsor and Maidenhead, um, uh, when they put their uh, energy usage of public buildings in real time, online, uh, energy consumption fell by 15% in three days, <coughs> just by shining the spotlight on the use of energy in those buildings, it was cut immediately and significantly. So transparency is the first pillar of this culture change. The second pillar must be incentives. Um, it's often said to me that, uh, and I have to say um, by people of all political persuasions um, uh, who have experience in government, that it doesn't matter what you do, um, you won't get civil servants uh, to respond to the uh, signals you're sending. And it seems to me that you can't expect people to respond if they don't have incentives to respond to the signals that they're being sent. And I don't just mean crude individual cash bonuses or incentives, I'm talking about institutional uh, incentives. If you're running a government agency which has a clear set of objectives and a budget of £100 million, pounds, what do you get? if at the end of the year you've delivered your agenda and you've only spent £99 million. Pounds. You know what you get. You get the million pounds taken back by the Treasury and your budget for the following year reset to 99 or more likely 98 and a half. That is not uh, the most obvious uh, incentivization of good behaviour. So we have to, as a Treasury under pressure, we have to assume the temptingly easy short-term gains of grabbing back cash from people who have got the message, who have understood how to do it, and who have delivered uh, efficiency gains over and above those that they are committed to do. We have to share efficiency surpluses with the organisations that are making them. We have to extend uh, the uh, use of payments by results contracts wherever we can, so that we're transferring risk and being certain that the taxpayer is not funding waste. Uh, we have to, um, uh, 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 using payment by results incidentally, uh, allows us to tap an incredibly important source of additional funding, as we have announced with our Welfare to Work program, where because the risk of delivery is outsourced to the private sector provider, we can tap into the AME, the annually managed expenditure program savings from reduced benefit claims and use them to fund what would be a departmental expenditure limit uh, program of welfare to work uh, action. And if we can do that in other areas, we're absolutely up for it. Um, a conservative run treasury will have no theological objection to breaking down the AV Dell uh, divide. So transparency, incentives, and the third pillar is freedom. There's no point giving people incentives. There's no point shining a spotlight on their behaviour 
if the micromanagement from the top so constrains their behavior that they cannot respond to those incentives, they cannot respond uh, to the uh, signals that transparency is sending. So we need to break down the culture of micromanagement, the plethora of process controls, which are the present government's preferred tool to manage uh, the activity, particularly of the local government sector. I think, if I remember rightly, the figure is that while local government spends 25% uh, percent, yeah, 25 percent of public spending, um, central government tar 81 percent of all central government targets relate to local government uh, activity. So that probably tells you uh, everything that you need uh, to know about um, the constraints that the local government sector in particular uh, has in responding innovatively to the challenges that we will face uh, over the year, uh, years ahead. Uh, we don't care, frankly, whether public services are delivered by public sector organisations, by third sector organisations, or by private sector organisations. What matters to us is that the democratic bodies that commission those services are properly accountable to their electorates and their constituencies and that the taxpayer gets the best possible value for money.